Well, the United Nations World Food Programme has started a lifting relief supplies to stranded people in Mozambique. The country is among the hardest hit by severe flooding caused by Cyclone Idai. The WFP says nearly two million people in Mozambique will need food aid over the next three months. CGTN's Brian Toussaint has more. A wide-scale rescue operation has been going on in Mozambique for about a week now. Some of those who have been lucky to survive the floods have been found on trees and rooftops. There is someone up there on that big tree. This person has been sitting there on that same tree since Friday without any food or anything. How are they supposed to leave? Hundreds of people have been killed and thousands more are displaced. The strong winds started and then the next day water started coming in and we had to flee. I grabbed my children, my goat, my chickens, ducks, they all left. We are without clothes, without anything. We don't have anything to eat, nothing, just the clothes on our backs. The United Nations World Food Program is coordinating food drops to remote areas for those in urgent need. So today we had our first winner's flight and uh, we managed to go to Garandara and we also went to Kaya, brought back some food stuff from uh, Kaya back to Beira and uh, we are planning another rotation now back to Garandara to deliver some more food stuff to the people that are stranded out there. The WFP has stepped up airdrops of cereal, high-energy biscuits, and water purification tablets to isolated pockets of people stranded by the floodwaters. WFP is continuing distributing food in Beira city, but also in isolated areas outside the city of Beira. We have uh, deployed helicopters and a cargo plane, and we have about 1,700 metric tons of food on the trucks moving towards Mozambique and have identified more food in the region that we will moving towards the people in need in Mozambique. The immense scale of the damage is starting to become clearer. About 90% of the city of Beira has been damaged. In surrounding areas, entire villages have been wiped out. Humanitarian agencies fear that the number of people affected will increase as heavy rains are forecast to continue. Brian Toussaint, CGTN. Well, as we try and fully understand Cyclone Idai, we're now joined here in our Nairobi studio by Dr. Richard Monang. He's an Environment and Regional Climate Change Coordinator at UNEP. Thank you so much for your time, Doctor. It is very difficult to fully comprehend the devastation, the death that has been caused by Cyclone Idai. And because all of this happened so quickly, it seems, it started as a storm, became flooding, and now it is what we're seeing today. Just help us understand this phenomenon of a cyclone and what exactly happened in this instance. Yeah, thank you very much uh, for having me in studio, Lily. Um, this is a manifestation of what the science is already uh, telling us um, just uh, before the end of last year, the Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change released a report uh, which shows that the world was actually heading towards 1.5 uh, degrees. Currently, the world is at 1.1, so we just shared uh, 0 0.4 degrees to 1.5. And what the report is telling us is that we're going to see severity uh, in these extreme events, uh, whether it is drought or flood or cyclones. And the UN environment released a report uh, called the Emissions Gap Report, which shows that the world needed to do a lot more to increase mm -hmm. the ambition to lower greenhouse gases fivefold. Mm -hmm. So when you look at what is happening uh, with uh, the cyclone in the southern African region affecting Mozambique, uh, Zimbabwe, and Malawi, uh, it is actually linked to uh, the changing climate because the oceans are warming, and the warming oceans, uh, from what the science is telling us, actually increases the energy which then increases the wind speed that increases the uh, damage that this cyclone has actually caused uh, in these countries and more importantly what is even more uh, dangerous is that what the science is telling us is it's not only going to be these floodings but it's also going to be drought and we're talking about a continent that have uh, 36 countries sharing the coastline a coastline of about 36,000 kilometers. So it's not only the Southern African countries that are going to see this. So this has actually become the new normal that we're going to be living with. And what's particularly scary is that these kinds of incidents at the moment are happening in places where we look at Cyclone Idai, in places that can often least afford it, 
um, and countries that are, are least prepared for it. What do we need to do then to ensure that when something like this happens, we're simply better prepared on this continent? Yeah, I think uh, an African proverb best describes it is that if you close your eyes to facts, you will learn through accidents. Mm. Uh, what needs to be done is that if you look at the entire African continent, uh, they have agreed to uh, international uh, treaties, for example, like the Paris Climate Change Agreement. We have African countries, about 53 of them, that have ratified, which means they do understand that integrating climate change into their national development uh, trajectory is quite very, very important. Mm. And this is quite uh, something that needs to be appreciated. They are also sign up uh, to the Sustainable Development Goals, uh, the International Development Framework. They've also signed up to what is called a Sandai Framework on Disaster Risk Reduction. This then means that the policies mm -hmm. and the development plans are there. What needs to be done is to look at how can you then operationalize these development plans in such a way that you are building resilience. Mm -hmm. For example, focusing on nature-based actions, what is called ecosystem-based uh, approaches. How do you integrate mangroves, uh, and uh, which on not only act as a defense to reduce these uh, sp storms or the speed, but at the same time are also more cost-effective rather than depending only on hard approaches. But the most important aspect is that if you look at um, Mozambique, uh, the affected area is almost about 3,000 kilometers. Mm -hmm. And if you were to take just half a meter of the 3,000 kilometer area that has been submerged in this flooding, it could actually generate up to about 1.5 billion cubic meters. That then means in as much as these storms are causing these disasters, rainwater harvesting, because what the mm. climate science is telling us is that you are going to have severity of flooding, severity of drought. So after some few months, you're going to have drought. Mm. So can countries then integrate within the national development uh, uh, plans, rainwater harvesting, and make this to become a national culture so that as the floods are coming, they can also be harvested. And another aspect which uh, needs to be looked into is that um, governments are there to be able to create the enabling environment mm. for the private sector to invest. If you look, for example, the rainwater harvesting, developing the rainwater harvesting tanks are going to be done by the private sector. But that then means that there needs to be the enabling environment where policies are created and incentives are provided so that some of these actions can actually be taken up by individual citizens mm -hmm. or the private sector to be able to create also enterprises, which is an opportunity that this changing climate mm -hmm. presents. Indeed. I mean, it is the new normal, and only building resilience will save lives. Thank you so Great. much, Dr. Thank Richard Monang, joining us here in our Nairobi studio.